Life is a process. We are a process. The universe is a process. These are the words of Ann Wilson Schaaf. Welcome to McBain Moments. So before I get started, as always, please make sure you take a moment to subscribe. Every subscription helps, and we are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscriber at a time. Okay, the universe is a process, and I'm talking about this because Scotty C93, whose channel I will link in the description below, challenged me to describe the universe in a McBain moments, which I'm not sure I can describe the whole universe in eight minutes, but let's talk about the universe for a few minutes and why I think that it's a process. So... Everything that I've run into is surrounded by a process to make it happen. Making yourself better is a process. Making your bed is a process. Becoming a better driver, becoming a better parent. These are all processes that we have to go through as human beings. Animals go through the process of growth and then birthing children and then eventually dying. And it's like that throughout the entire universe. If you look at even, even inanimate objects, stars, stars go through a birth process, a life cycle, an insanely long life cycle by our perspective, but a life cycle, and then they eventually die, either collapsing into a dwarf star or exploding in a massive supernova. And so, you know, it got me to thinking that there is one universal truth. If there was one universal truth, which I, which I don't necessarily believe is the case, but if there is one universal truth, it's that there is nothing that isn't in the, in a, within the bounds of a process. There is nothing that is not within the bounds of a process. And so in a lot of ways, that means that the process is more important than the result. Because the process is how you get there. You can't get the result without having the process. And that goes for anything. And you know how I am about iterative process. You get to do the thing over and over again to get to the goal you're looking for. But I think the people who live by the words, the process is more important than the result, sometimes forget the result's still important. It doesn't... You can do the process over and over, but if you're not getting results, that's the definition of insanity, right? Or if you're not getting different results, that's the definition of insanity. So in that, if you look at all the processes that surround your life, if you look at all the processes that you have to work in on a day-to-day -day basis, and there's probably half a thousand processes that you do in a day most of them are super repetitious you do them so often you don't even think about it it's all muscle memory as they say but if you look at all these processes that make it so you can go from getting up in the morning to doing the things you need to throughout the day to going to bed at night you'll realize that your whole life is a set of processes now how do you make that work for you well you have to refine the processes make it so that they're more efficient Make it so that you get a better result for each unit of work you put into the process. And I think that's something that a lot of us struggle with. And so it occurred to me that as part of that process setup, the way the universe works is, and, and, I've, and I've probably beaten this dead horse until it's dead again, Iteration is the process by which we improve ourselves. We run a hundred, we run 500 processes a day. And probably 90% of those processes are the same processes we ran yesterday. So those are iterations. So every time we run the process, we should be thinking, what can I do to make the process just a little bit better? And if we do that, we make our universe a better place. It may only be incrementally. It may be very, very small. But by doing that, we make the universe a better place. And for us as humans, it's for us as stakeholders in our own universe. And this, this might be getting a little too existential for such a short piece. But for, 
for stakeholders, for actors within our own universe, you know, for every person, they're the center of their own universe, whether they want to admit it or not. And they have to be. That's the way it works. That's the way we're designed. That's the way our brains were constructed. We are the center of our, our own universe. And if you take, uh, I don't know what they're called, it's the bubble, the bubble web maps that people make for conceptualization and brainstorming, put yourself at the center. And around you are your, your family, your parents, your children, your nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. That's, that's your web. And then outside of that, you've got your friends. And outside of that, you've got the things that make your life livable. This is your universe and you're at the center of it. And, and besides people, you also have like your job, you have your, your home, you have your vehicle. These are all things that kind of orbit you because they say, like when you've got someone famous, you say that a person is in that person's orbit. Well, in another context, the person that's famous might be in the other person's orbit because a person that's, that's famous for doing cooking might be might have someone who's famous for sales in their orbit but when you're talking about sales it's the person that's cooking that's in the orbit of the salesperson and so we're all orbiting each other and so we have to keep in mind that we are the center of our own universe and it's these processes by which we make our universe better and if we're smart about it make the universe of those in our or in our orbit within our orbit and whose orbits we are in better as well Is that good enough for you, Scotty? Make sure you guys all subscribe. Again, we are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscriber at a time, and every subscription helps. I really appreciate the support. This has been a McBain moment.